In this video, Luke's gonna be the client. Come and take a seat. This is the Integra process. So these are the three phases that we're working through. Um, you have a goal, and I need to figure out what do you need to achieve that goal. Mm -hmm. And so what we're going to do, let me just rub this off the board, is start to figure out what it is that you want, what you expect, and what you need. Yeah. So give me an idea, what do you want? I'm gonna be competing next year in a natural bodybuilding show, so my first one. Mm -hmm. um, my training's not consistent at the moment. Uh, so when I do get into training, I'm going to be starting prep yeah. uh, beginning of January. Yeah. Um, so it's just making sure I've had a few injuries in the past, making sure that they don't come up again. So it enables me to have a good run through from January to September, yeah. training consistently to obviously step on stage mm. in my skin piece. Tell me more about the injuries. Yeah, so I think it was back in the day when I was uh, didn't just was training to failure every single session, mm -hmm. every single set. Um, I'd get I had bad shoulders for a good maybe seven to nine months, yeah. um, and also getting uh, some elbow pain. Mm -hmm. I've also had a lot of back pain uh, for a while. So when it comes to maybe like heavy squats or, or deads. Mm -hmm. If I just, if I'm not bracing properly and I just do a little bit too much or something's just not quite right, it, it will flare up. Yeah. So yeah, quite a few injuries. What, what, what makes you think training to failure caused all of these things? Just because training to failure is probably, f and we're talking like not form failure as well, we're talking I can't rep anything. So mm -hmm. form would probably suffer nearer to the end. Yeah. Um, and it literally was just every single set of every exercise back in the day. Yeah. So that's obviously going to be putting quite a lot of strain on my body, especially when my, my actual technique broke down as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm just assuming that that would be maybe the main factor. So what was the big pull to do that? Why did you do it? Just enjoyed the feeling of going into a training session and absolutely afterwards knowing that you left there weren't nothing else in the tank. Yeah. Um, as you said, it was before I sort of back in my bro days, if you're gonna call it that. So it was just um, enjoyed the feeling of the pump. Yeah. Like Arnie said, like chasing the pump. So I used to enjoy that. So 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 it seems that you did this because you enjoyed it, mm -hmm. and you had a certain experience there, and there was a result that was perceived as negative. Let's mm -hmm. let, let's call it negative. Show sure, this shoulder yeah. elbow. What was the positive from that? Actually enjoying training. Yeah. Well, I haven't for a good few years now since sort of leaving the lecturing job, starting up Shredded by Science, trying to find, when you go from having pretty much your own gym, myself and Tom, training partner, yeah. um, to a public run gym, mm -hmm. you have full of the general public, mm -hmm. which I don't tend to like many people anyway. So um, being in that environment, just didn't didn't enjoy that the environment so didn't really enjoy the experience another thing is obviously not having that that training partner as well yeah so we've got something to do with the gym environment mm -hmm. training even, partner and even when starting the business feeling going to the gym and being in taking maybe an hour two hours out of the day when you have your own business and you've always got that thought in your mind when you're starting a business off, it's like, I could be doing this, I could be doing that. Yeah. So sort of combating that. Now I'm a lot better because I take, I've got obviously people working for me now, so I have becoming a little bit more selfish when it comes to my own training. How's your training for this gonna help you with that? Well, that's the thing, back in the day when we used to coach actual clients mm. online, we still do to a certain ex extent. Um, it probably would have helped the business a lot. Mm. Now, it, now it won't. The reason why I want to do it is it helps me as an individual. Yeah. From a young age, I'd, I love competition. Yeah. So where it used to be karate, my competition turned to business. Yeah. And now with the goal of doing a natural bodybuilding show, people would, it, wouldn't expect me to do it. Yeah. At this stage, maybe a few years ago, it would have made more sense. So because 
I want something to focus on mm. because I did have the training back in the day. Yeah. Um, now it, it gives me something to focus on, to train, rather than just training for the sake of it. That's what it feels like at the moment. So I'm just training to not get too overweight and not lose too much muscle mass. Yeah. So, so that goal for you right now, you're saying it's because you need a focus. Mm. Why else do you want to Challenge. achieve that? I want to know, I've prepped clients before yeah. and I want, to, I want to challenge myself and go into extreme low levels of body fat yeah. to experience it, to have that, to having the, the challenge of running a business, trying to get down to low uh, levels of body fat mm -hmm. um, just for the experience. I mean, when, you, when I, I'm very competitive, so when, when you've lost that competitiveness, mm -hmm. the competitiveness in me is never gone. Mm -hmm. I've just, I need something to get the competitive spirit going again, just just from a personal uh, standpoint. And this this makes sense to me the most than doing anything else because I I did enjoy training. Mm -hmm. uh, I hate powerlifting, mm -hmm. so in regard to having something to compete in, which is in sync with the the business, this this makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. You know, when anyone ever comes in here, I always want to kind of figure out, on this board I always scribble down on, and mm -hmm. this is just kind of how my brain works. Yeah. I, I really want to figure out what, what's the motivation behind, like what, what, what's the why? Mm -hmm. So with this thing here, you've got a why which is this and which is this, mm -hmm. but you're already, you've got these two things, you're hitting these two, if we were to call them values, you're hitting those two values in this business thing. Mm -hmm. so, so, so what's going to create the pathway or the environment for you to put in the work that's required to achieve that. How are you gonna take the focus and challenge that you put into this mm -hmm. and put it into this? How am I gonna do it? Hmm. By doing it. Simple as that, knowing that, and I've made it public, that having that accountability hmm. to do it. Um, and it's just a, 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 new, a new stimulus, it's a new experience. So yeah. That's what I want to experience. Like I, can, I still get, I have the focus in the business, I have the challenge, I have the competitiveness in the business. Yeah. But I want to have the experience of going from 20 plus percent body fat down to like 6% body fat. Hmm. So um, it's more of the, the psychological challenge of going through so many extremes. Yeah. So I know a lot of people which are competing and some people it affects them really yeah. a lot and other people, they're fine. Um, so it's just trying to, something like a, a personal goal. So the business goal is more of the business where I see it's like not just me, mm. but this is me for my own thing mm. to give me the focus back on training because yeah. it's been neglected for the last three years. Yeah. So the biggest challenge and the reason why you're here mm -hmm. is because for you to get to there, you've highlighted that you've got these injuries in the past and these, these, these limiting factors holding you back. Yeah. How do they affect you now? When was the last time you trained? Uh, last week for Thursday. Yeah. Um, that was with the YouTube subscriber winner. And th that was a great session because one, I had a training partner. Yeah. And two, we went back to the days when we'd done like a, a strip set on the bench press. Yeah. But because of that, later on in that session when I was doing like an incline press, the elbow started flaring up again. Okay. So that was the other reasons like, I don't want to, I want to get back to the training I enjoyed, yeah. obviously modified, knowing what I know now compared to what I didn't know back then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I know deep down that if I get back into the training I want to do in the frequency, mm. that I've got a high probability of those injuries creeping up again. And then that's just another reason to not get back into training. Yep. I've still got more questions, but I think mm -hmm. this might be for a future session in terms of that goal yep. and in terms of what you need to put in place, what strategies you need to put in place. Mm -hmm. But let's, let's start zooming in on this. Yep. So, so, so I, I said earlier on that we've got these three phases mm -hmm. and we've got this goal of performance. Mm -hmm. And for you, if we were to relate that to this, we could be thinking, oh, you want to be lifting this amount or you want to be able to do this reps. Yeah. Think about this like an external goal. Mm -hmm. 
and because of your experience, because of the knowledge that you've got, I'm sharing more information with you right now. Mm-hmm. Um, some clients might come in and I might not give this much information because it's just too much. Yeah. Um, but we've got this external goal and this means it's external to you. So a number when it's, when it's preset, when it's predefined, four times eight or 20 minutes or 5K, yeah. it's external to you, something you've got to fit around. Yeah. That's phase three. What I need to do is go, well, what are the building blocks of that? So this phase two, that I want to get you into is a body focused. Yeah. And this for your goal actually might be where we stick. And so this is figuring out where are the lagging body parts? Where are Mm -hmm. the muscles that are not functioning? Where are the joints that are not functioning? So today, the assessment we're going to start to go through. Instead of jumping straight out there and doing some sort of squat assessment or doing some sort of single leg kind of wobble on a board or something, Mm -hmm. we're going to start looking at joints. We're going to start looking at muscles. Do you have any questions right now? No, I'm good. That's sweet, okay. Let's give it a couple of seconds. I'm gonna take a picture of this and then I'm gonna get you on the table. Perfect. So the key thing, we have a saying and it's think science, speak client. Nice. So when people watch this video and they see some of the things that I'm talking about, we need to get the context. The context is really important. You're my client now and you're actually really educated. So, so when I tell you about these questions, when we zoom out, I know you're smiling because of that educated thing. When we zoom out, we want to see what's the purpose of this. I'm giving you more detail than I would with a client. Mm-hmm. These five questions are everything. This is everything that we do at Integra. So we need to get the answers to these five questions before we can build that program that's going to help you win that competition. So we need to know who. So the who comes into injuries. What's your, what's your experience, training and experience? We need to start to look at structure, things that don't change. Then we need to figure out the goal and we've, we've kind of gone through that process already. So it's really kind of, what's the goal of this program? What's the goal of this exercise? Why are you doing all of this stuff? But right now we're moving into this. What do you have? So you can't use what you don't have. And there are two things that I want to look at and it's the building blocks of every movement, of every motion. It's the building blocks of everything we're gonna do out there in the gym. So we're looking at joint, we're looking at muscle function. Your ability to squat is dependent upon those variables. So when you squat, you've got this ankle motion, you've got this knee motion, you've got this hip motion. We probably don't want any spinal motion, we want that thing to stay static. And then we've got the ability for your shoulders to get into this position. So this is our phase one. This is where we're gonna start to work through your body. So I'm actually gonna start down in your ankles and I'm gonna start to assess dorsiflexion. If you bend this knee for me, that's it. And all I want you to do is lift this foot up as high as you can. And the thing that I'm doing, if we were to bring this down, look at the norms. I have a book behind me on this bookshelf that says that you should be able to get into X amount of degrees for dorsiflexion. Bring that back down again. I, I don't really, I'm not really concerned about that. So the thing I'm concerned about is what happens to this right ankle? What happens to Luke's right ankle versus Luke's left ankle? Because when we start to look at norms, then we're starting to look at a generalized protocol. Bend this knee. We're gonna start to look at this knee rotation. So twist this foot out for me. And then I'm assessing how far does this twist out versus this. Twist down. And what some people may be thinking, twist in, bring this down. You never go through knee rotation, twist in, in a squat. However, this is just given as a clue to say, do you have some muscles around here or do you have some restrictions around here that are going to prevent that motion? Okay, take this leg, slowly twist in, and bring it back out. Do that again and bring that back out, take this, and twist in, and bring that back out, and again. How does that feel, left to right? That's more, it feels more restricted. On which side? On the left. On the left side. So I can see a restriction, you can feel a restriction on that side. Let's bring that to there, twist in. That's good. Twist in. That's cool. What do you feel? Quite tight up here. Twist in. There's nothing. 
So you've got this restriction here, which is a few degrees compared to this side. Mm -hmm. As soon as we take it there, it becomes more apparent, yeah. which I don't know if on the camera, if that's gonna be picked up, but we'll see. Lock this knee, twist in, bring it back, and again. So for everyone looking on the camera, I'm not looking at this because you're actually compensating through this. You've got all this foot motion. So I'm trying to remove this. I'm not even looking at this. I've got the knee locked out and I'm looking at this hip and I'm looking at how far does this femur, this thigh twist in. Bring this out, twist in. So right now, if we were to look at this board, we've got this big goal here. We've got these injuries, we've got this shoulder, we've got this elbow, we've got this lower back. Traditionally, I'm not a physiotherapist, I'm a trainer. Traditionally, if you have a knee issue, we'd be looking at that knee. Mm -hmm. If you have a hip issue, we'd be looking at that hip. This is, we've got the subjective stuff, now we're trying to do something that's objective. Mm -hmm. So let me just write that stuff down. So we had left hip internal rotation when it was neutral. Those numbers on the board, one, two, or three, represent a magnitude. Mm -hmm. So the bigger the number, the bigger the difference. So when you're abducted, we can see that, yeah. which is inferring something, which we'll get to soon. Cool. Let me just go back down into your feet, because I want to look at some subtailer really quickly. Okay, can you slide towards me just a little bit so your heels are enough? Okay, how does this feel on the left versus the right? Nope. So your brain figures out a solution. Mm -hmm. This is a big thing. You've come in with this left hip that's restricted when it's abducted, yeah. but you walked in today. You were able to squat last week when you did that training session on Tuesday or whenever it was. Mm -hmm. Your body's figured out a solution. What we're trying to do is go, where are the weak links in this body? Yeah. So what did we have? Right, subtalar. So dorsiflexion is looking good, plantar flexion, subtalar, inversion is looking good, eversion, we've got a restriction on this side. We could get into the forefoot, but not today. We've looked at the knee at 90 degrees. We've looked at internal rotation, external rotation. Yeah. I actually want to see how far you'll actually flex these knees in two positions. One of them is on your back. So keep your heel down. Mm -hmm. Keep this ankle at 90 degrees and slide this towards your bum. Bring it back out. Do that again, but not as aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Take it down. Do the same on this side. That's pretty cool. Okay. Lift your knees up. We found a use for a farm runner. Yes. My fascial release, no. Right. Twist in. Okay, lock this knee out. Okay, turn that down. Twist in. Lock this knee out. Okay. So knee rotation, knee extension, knee flexion, looking perfect. Bring these out. Bring these down again and just slide up just a little bit. So we found this restriction on the left side on Internal rotation, twist this leg out, twist this leg out, and again. External rotation is looking good. I'm actually checking your pelvis because you're really good at compensating. So as, as I'm asking you to do this, your pelvis kind of wanted to move, yeah, yeah. but that's looking pretty good. Cool. Now if we go here, so hip and knee at 90, twist this leg and bring it back. Now somewhere over there, I've got an electro goniometer. We could get some really precise numbers, twist again. We could get one of those plastic goniometers, which I'm sure I've got somewhere here. But the thing I'm looking for is the big difference. Yeah. So this is moving something. Bend this knee. That's it. Go to there and twist. And there's nothing there. And again. So right now, there's no assumptions. Why is that? That could be something to do with the hip joint. That could be something to do with those muscles around there. Yeah. So hip internal rotation. If we had a four, that would be a four. <laughs> Bend this knee. 
twist. Okay, bring that down. Bend this knee. And twist. And again. Okay, that's pretty good. Can you set up for me and face the board? Yep. Now I want you to do slide back a little bit. Cross your arms across your chest like this. And I want you to extend up as far as you can. I want you to go into full spinal extension. So that's as far as it can go. Now back out of there. Stop. Now come up a little bit. There. Maintain that position. Now twist to the left. That's good. Come back. Twist to the right. Come back. Go left again. And come back. Go right again. I'll do that one more time for me. I'm gonna actually put my hand onto your SI joint, so I wanna make sure your pelvis doesn't move. Mm -hmm. And I want you to see how far you can twist to the left. Do that left side again. It's good, come back, go to the right. Okay, and lay on your back. Okay, bring your legs together. Keep them straight. That's it, take your arms down by your side. Mm -hmm. I want you to reach down as far as you can down this side, so you're actually doing a side bend. Mm -hmm. Go for it. That's good. Come back up, go down this way. Okay, go back up. Okay, so we've done your hips, we've done your knees, we've done your ankles. Mm -hmm. Now what I want you to do actually, can you do a little side bend to the left? Tiny, that's it, bring it back to the middle. Okay, keep your arms where they are. Don't mm -hmm. let your hands touch, your, touch the table for me. Lift that's up. it, and yeah. don't let them lift up. Take this shoulder and shrug it up to the ceiling. Bring it back down. Up to the ceiling, yeah. Yeah, bring it back down, take this down. Okay, take this up towards my hand. As in, like that? Perfect, and take it down. And then do the same on this side, and take it down. Okay, what I want you to do is, don't let your spine move, don't let your trunk move. Mm -hmm. Reach down with this hand towards your right knee. That's good, bring it back up. Do the same on this side. And bring it back up. Okay, do the opposite of that. So you're actually gonna pull this up towards your ear mm -hmm. and take it back. Okay, do the same on this side and take it back. Same thing again, there's, there's, there's these tiny little bit of a difference. Mm -hmm. We're not really too concerned about that. If you bend this elbow, it's the big difference is like that left hip. Yeah. And if we keep that there, I want you to gently twist this arm out That's good, bring it back. Okay, twist out. Cool. What's the difference? Like one on this one. Yeah. Like the upright shoulder injury, that was the shoulder. Yeah, bring this around to here. Mm -hmm. So, twist this out. Bring that back. Twist this in. Okay, take that back in. Bring this back up. Okay, twist out. Bring this back in. Twist this in. Okay. So actually when you get to 90 degrees, external and internal is pretty good. It's, it's mm -hmm. when you're at zero degrees. Do you want to set up and face the board? Yeah. So if we have a look at your list here. So the thing that we've been looking at is this. And we've been comparing left to right. Mm -hmm. So we've seen a big difference in that left hip when you're abducted, internal rotation, when you're at 90, 90, so the knee and hip are at 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. And then we saw this right shoulder. So we could take this and have a look over here and kind of go, okay, so we got this shoulder thing. And actually you said earlier, and I didn't write up on this particular board, there is a right shoulder that always gives you grief. Mm -hmm. So there's something going on around that right shoulder. The scapular motion is pretty good, but there's something going around that glenohumeral joint that's not supporting that joint. Mm -hmm. And when you start to push it, you're pushing it over there. Yeah. Tipping point. There's something with this elbow, and we haven't got into the elbow. We haven't done elbow, we haven't done wrist, we haven't done neck, but this is for another session. Yeah. We're looking for the big picture stuff right now. And then you've got this lower back. So the right trunk rotation was a one, meaning there was a little difference between left and right. Yeah. But that didn't seem to be the biggest thing. We've got this hip thing. Mm -hmm. My guess right now, and it's a guess, and it's assumption, which is terrible. But my guess right now is that that left hip may be contributing to that lower back stuff that you've been feeling. Yeah. 
but that's an assumption. We need to figure this stuff out. So the way that we use this, we've got two options. We can see these limitations. We've either got to respect these ranges and work within what you have available, mm -hmm. which means we modify all the exercises to take this into account, or we see if we can improve the range of motion. And the biggest thing that we use is to do with the muscle and it's to do with how that muscle contracts. Yeah. So the purpose of all of this mm -hmm. was to figure out what you have. And the purpose of all of these questions is so that we can build the best exercise, <clears throat> the best program, the thing that we're going to efficiently get you to this without breaking you down. Yeah. And that's the key thing. It's not about how can we build a quick fix, it's, how, it's about efficiency. So we've found all of these ranges and we've got these two options. We either respect the range of motion so you don't have this external rotation, you don't have this internal rotation in this position, or we attempt to improve it. Yeah. I think an ad free needs to, uh, as you said, like lagging body parts is definitely the legs. Mm -hmm. It's probably because of that and the injuries why it's been neglected. Yeah. Um, so with a score free, you would you would say that definitely needs to, we can't respect that, we need to improve that, especially for like a, a, a sort of physique. Um, like natural bodybuilding. So if we were to write a book, mm -hmm. and if, or if we were to write an ebook, or if we were to write an article on improving range of motion, yeah. we've got all of this, these things that we could do, all of these kind of different types of tricks and treatments that we can do up there. We need to figure out what's limiting this. Yeah. And so if we wanted to go into detail, which is, is, is not for the purpose of this consultation right now, we actually need to list all potential reasons because what I do not know is why your hip is doing that. And you said to me that when in the, what was it in the, in the, not in the old, old days, what did you say? Back in the day day. Back in the day day. <laughs> back in the day day when you were doing karate. karate from... Your left hip was yeah. always the weaker hip. Yeah. So your roundhouse on the left side was always different to the right. Mm -hmm. So is that restriction because that's your joint structure? So we've got a structural thing. Mm -hmm is because I did martial arts and then I did boxing and then I did rugby. So, so, so as I get to this age now, I've picked up all of these knocks. Yeah. Is this your normal structure? Yeah. And I don't like using the word abnormal, but let's call it. So abnormal structure, which might be a bone spur mm -hmm. or it might be this little labrum tear thing that you've got. Your nervous system is getting a billion bits of information and it's making a, a choice based upon all the information. So if it's a normal thing, can we change that? No, unless we break it. If it's an abnormal thing, can we change that? Well, we can change the forces that have gone into that, but we still have to respect that. Mm -hmm. So if, if that is the reason why you've got this limitation, me putting you into a passive range and forcing it in, AKA a stretch, might not be the best thing. So I need to figure out using some manual skills what I do. That's one thing. So we're talking about a structure thing. Or is it some sort of contractile issue? Mm -hmm. You haven't gone into that range, your muscle hasn't gone into that shortest range, so your nervous system doesn't have access to that. Could we improve that? Absolutely. So we might be able to use something that improves that, and that might be an isometric. Mm -hmm. So that might be something that we explore in the training sessions. And we might start to think, not that we're gonna change that before we go train, but we might go, how could we enhance that with the training? Yeah. Cool. So we're in our lab, we're in our gym. So let's just zoom out again and let's just look at these three phases. So in there we were doing this assessment and we'd actually spend a couple of sessions on the table actually just seeing, can we improve the mobility of this joint? Can we improve the ability of these muscles to contract? Mm -hmm. But actually we're moving into this phase two. So this phase two is all about building the body. How can we optimize each piece of the system? So when you look around it, you see all this equipment, like this hip machine, this torso machine, this leg extension thing over there. There's a big emphasis in the fitness industry that we should get rid of machines and machines are bad. And that we should use that power rack over there. And that's all we need to do this thing. Mm -hmm. I put that power rack down here. Yeah. And the reason for that is this machine that we're gonna go on now, we're gonna be able to target that muscle that we saw in there wasn't working. And we got it working, now what we need to do is get it stronger. Mm -hmm. 
So, what I want you to do is jump onto this machine. If you take a seat, put your legs onto the inside. Yeah. So there are a couple of ranges in there that I looked at with your hip. Mm -hmm. And we need to kind of get past that idea that this is about fat loss and this is going to get rid of some fat on here because that spot reduction thing is just bullshit. Yep. Um, so we've got your hip and we've got your hip in some sort of 90 degrees there. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you move this out so your heel's on there, yep. I actually want to get to 80 degrees. Okay. Sit back against that thing and I just want you to arch this lower back. So I just want you to keep that position. Mm -hmm. I don't want this to move. I don't want anything else to move. The only thing I want to move is this. Yeah. And all I want you to do, check this out. Yeah. I want you to move this up really slowly and really controlled. Both legs or just? Both legs. Okay. So the cool thing about this particular machine here, and this is a Cybex Eagle. I'll do that again. And just see how far you go here. Left one's tightening right up. Yeah. And do two more reps. And right now, I don't want you thinking about anything else apart from making this smooth. Mm -hmm. And take that down. We can actually change the angle on your hip. So we actually saw that this position, some of those muscles weren't working that well, and we improved that. Yeah. We're reinforcing that. The next thing I want to do, if you lean forward, I'm going to lay back. Okay, lay back on there. Keep that back arched. Mm -hmm. and I want you to do the same thing. So you get into this point, which is good, and then take it in. So for the next five reps, I want you to get to that same position. You don't need to worry about that. I'm assessing that. Where do you feel that? It's there. It feels like a little bit on my knee there. I think it might be rotating a little bit to try and get it a little bit further. Mm, so don't do it. Just limit that. And then tack that in. So what I can tell you is that that group of muscles has a strength profile. Yeah. You're actually strongest when you get to this position and then you get weaker yeah. as you get to that point. This machine's actually built so that it drops off. Yeah. And we've actually got underneath here and we've actually accentuated that. So we've made it drop off a little bit more because mm -hmm. we tend to be really weak because we never get into that point there. Yeah. I want you to do that again, but this time what I want you to do is actually push your foot down. Push so down. lay back, yeah. push your foot down. And I, wanna, I want you to feel that kicking in. So push down a bit harder. Now keep pushing down, don't let this move, and then do that same thing. Both legs, yeah? Both legs. Pushing down both legs. Mm -hmm. How does that feel? A lot stronger. It, looked like, it felt like it went further. Mm -hmm. Do that again, but slow down. and then stop there. So with something like a machine, when you've got that chest press machine, when you've got that leg press, we get to play with this thing called intention. Mm -hmm. So wherever you're pushing, we can start to bias these muscles. Yeah. And so we were actually biased and we had the hip abductors and we start to bias towards these hip extensors as well. Yeah. So we can start to create these challenges, which when we're using those dumbbells, when we're using this cable thing, we don't get those options. Yeah. So we've got this continuum. Okay, so we've been looking at this hip thing. We also saw this trunk rotation thing. So we're going to go over and have a look at that torso rotation. Perfect. So in regards to this stuff, where did you have a specific mentor that you learned this from? Or? Yeah, yeah. So, so I've actually been in the industry since 96, 97. And, I, and I, I've been through all of the courses and all of the courses were, were, were protocol driven. You must do this. Mm -hmm. And it never took into account all of the, the idiosyncrasies that you've just presented with when we did that assessment. I, I've had a few mentors, but the biggest one has been a guy called Tom Purvis. And I met Tom well over 12, 13, 14 years ago now. And he runs a program called Resistance Training Specialist. He's been doing this for, for, for I don't know, you know, hundreds of years now. Mm -hmm. but, but his main thing is, is, is how can I build an exercise for each individual. How can I make this personal to you? And that means 
how can I build this exercise so it challenges your muscles properly or appropriately, depending upon who you are, your goal, and all of those five questions. But also, how can I, how can I change your experience? Because our industry is built by people who love exercise, which is why we're affecting less than 10% of the population. So, so his big thing is really, one, how do we make things more efficient? How do we make things more effective? And how do we improve the experience so we can actually affect more people? Um, but he has been, and still to this day, one of, one of my most influential mentors. Bringing the personal back into personal training. There you go. Making it client defined. Mm. Which doesn't mean your client dictates, because you're the consultant, but it means when a client walks in, how do you deliver exactly what they need, exactly what they want, exactly what they expect, based upon communication style, learning style, their structure, their injuries, what do they want to achieve? And not falling down this route of, we're gonna do this exercise because it does this. Yeah. We're actually going, what is it that we actually want to achieve? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, the, that's the shift. So that's been, I mean, that's been a, a journey for me, but that's been the thing that, that and, and, and in fact, it was longer than that, it was like 2002. Mm -hmm. And when I met him and when I started to look at that stuff and it started to, I'm, I'm really interested in how things work. You know, if it's a website, I wanna figure out how this thing works. If it's your shoulder, I wanna figure out how it works. Yeah. So I know exactly what do I need to do at what point. Um, but it's, it's about getting those underlying details, but still with that big picture view. Yeah. So we got this thing, torso rotation. Mm -hmm. So again, we, I, I gotta keep saying this because I don't wanna lose fact of we're in phase two, which is about building the body. Mm -hmm. And the, there are these ideas of what we should do to this trunk, this torso, this rectus abdominis, this lower back. We should keep it static and we should train it in a static fashion, which is great until we actually move out of this one position. Yeah. Um, we actually saw that you were restricted to the right. Yeah. We did some isometrics in there. We saw that that thing improved. What we want to do now is, is build this exercise so that it actually challenges those groups of muscles into, tr into trunk rotation. Mm -hmm. What I want to do is tie you up. Right, yeah. Oh yeah. So what I want you to do is take a seat on there, put your leg on the other side. And I want you to maintain that middle. So you grab all of them, don't worry about the straps. Cool. Slide your hips forward a little bit. Now go into that full extension again that you did, at, that's it. And then come back out of that. I want you in the neutral stop some sort of neutral position mm -hmm. and then okay can you hold that position yeah. okay don't let it move don't let it move there we go damn son so i'm just thinking about how can i prepare your muscles for this thing we're doing an isometric mm -hmm. in that neutral position but then i want to explore how can we progress into those extremes Okay, I'm going to let you rest. I'm going to hold on to that, so just relax. So, we saw a restriction in right trunk rotation, mm -hmm. which means I want you to move your legs to the left, which is exactly the same motion. We're just flipping it. Okay. So, keep this position. Don't go into flexion. Mm -hmm. I want you to keep the tension on these guys mm -hmm. and think about how can I prevent me pushing my fingers in. So, you've got to keep my fingers out. Okay. And then from here, I want you to slowly... Move the pads in that direction. Okay. Go for it. Slow, 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 slow. And then slowly, slowly, slowly come back. And my legs here, so if you let it go fast, you're gonna break it. Mm -hmm. Go again. Go slow. Really, really, really slow. That's it. Do one more like that. That's it. How does that feel? Hard. and rest mm, new. so the biggest thing on those five questions we've got the who goal have the fourth one is ownership mm -hmm. I want you to own every degree of this mm -hmm. so if you start to swing this then we're starting to play with this thing called inertia and inertia yeah. does two things it makes it hard in one place and it makes it too easy it takes away the resistance and I want your muscles fully challenged from this lengthened to this shortened position so do this again, yep. but go really slowly. That's it. And I want to see where can you get this to. So your ribcage is staying still. Slow, slow. That's it, and slowly back. 
stop and again that's it and you've got one more to do but don't let me sink in and you're getting all soft that's it and rest how did that feel just um just a new because it's like a new it's totally, totally new, new so it's yeah like, but you're, but you're on in this. And we've actually micro progressed you up to this way. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna do six reps. Yeah. And we're gonna go a little bit further and you're gonna try and get these muscles into their choice position. And then you're gonna move back. Yeah. So you're not gonna come back to the middle, you're gonna lengthen them a little bit. Okay, so a little bit more. Yeah, you ready? Yep. Okay, go for it. To that. Come back to there. Okay, and again. So you're pushing in on the pad, you're pushing out on the strap. This shouldn't feel like a hip challenge, it should feel like a trunk or core, whatever you want to call it. And I can't count, I think that's what, three reps? I can't do six now. <laughs> it's very fatiguing. And rest, okay. Jump off. So that was the initial assessment done. So if you could summarize that a little bit and yeah. then what you do for client in the second session. Sure, sure. One thing uh, that I want to bring up is the context of how we're talking. Mm -hmm. um, so I said it earlier, think science, speak client. So based upon you, based upon the people who are watching, the type of information we're talking about is much more in depth. Mm -hmm. um, I would then expect you or any of the viewers or any of my team to speak to clients like this. So this is, this is, this is really important. So the purpose of today was really to figure out are we gonna be a good match? So what is your goal? Why do you want that? How are we gonna get there? In terms of a time frame, is, is it something that I think is realistic or is it something we think is realistic? So we talked about the goals. And then the next thing we're thinking about is what are you presenting with? So your goal is to get this bigger chest or your goal is to get these delts. For sure, we can set up these amazing exercises, but what's underlying? So it's having that inside view. So joint function and muscle function. So in terms of your ranges, we found today some hip thing, some shoulder thing, some trunk and spine thing. And then we didn't even address this sub -tailor thing. Mm -hmm. We get to choose what we do from there, but now we've seen it, we've got to make that choice. Do we improve it or do we respect it? And we started to look to how could we improve it. And then when we're looking at all of this stuff here, for sure, I can develop something there. But how can we develop each piece so that it functions at a higher level so that you get better results when you get to there? Michael, I just want to thank you for today. It Pleasure. allows me to have a non-restrictive slut drop. Which yeah. I'm just going to demonstrate. Okay. We're at a Keith Lemon toe finish. <laughs> 